American Feud, published by Trusting Press. That which comes after. The weather was relatively good. Some people were having a picnic in front of the statues of Simon Bolivar and Jose de San Martin. There was a huge moon that illuminated everything. He felt its rays washing over him. To his right, some young people were throwing a frisbee around a colonial-style rustic little wooden house. To the left, in a large playground, dozens of little kids were playing on the swings, teeter-totters and slides, while others were jumping around and chasing each other around the fountain. Sounds of joy filled the area. He climbed a small mound from where he could see the entrance, but also the area immediately below. There was a strange smell in the air, a smell of civilization, mixed with nature, of the inventor and the criminal. And a distant murmur, which seemed to be coming down from the tall oak tree. It was now 8.20. The sun had set some time ago. Night had driven away the day, and the park was a map. A map of the moment. The city. Cities. The whole world. Suddenly something flashed in his mind. The light of Greece came to his mind, black and brilliant at the same time. A stone paved street, the caldera of Santorini, an orange tree, a little church, the smell of burnt fir tree, the blue ribbon tied to a small bucket, a flagstone paved courtyard, two people, the conflict, the fear, the forgiveness. He drew the last puff, the smoke thinned out, travelled in a spiral shooting tendrils, that followed the sky's track and climbed high as a memory. As if he was about to stomp on the cigarette butt, his eye fell on a tall bush next to the fountain. The way it was illuminated by the moon, it resembled a face looking straight up to the sky. He started walking towards it without knowing why. The image of an older man with an oval face, arched eyebrows, drooping eyelids, a thin moustache, and ever so slightly powered cheeks was coming to mind. Just then, a squirrel ran out in front of him. As he approached, the squirrel paused at the same spot, motionless, as if hypnotized, unexpectedly fearless. He was only five or six feet away from it, when, from, the behind, of the bu from behind the bush, he heard the child's voice. Hey, come here, come here. The squirrel lowered its fr front legs and ran away very fast to the north. At the same moment, about fifty yards away, straight ahead of him, a little blond head appeared from behind the bush. His face had strong features, big playful eyes and freckles on his che cheeks. He wore new, well-ironed clothes. The child stopped and stood looking at him. He did the same. Before either one could say a word, a woman's voice called out, Phoenix! The woman came out from behind the bush. She was dressed in simple jeans and white sweater. It was Laura. Her hair start, had started to grow longer. Everything was finally coming to an end. This chapter was closing. In a few hours there would be an airplane that would bring them back. He had made it. Yes, America. The country of the happy ending. He started walking towards them. He was among the trees, surrounded by people with the seconds, the minutes, swirling around him like the autumn leaves that were falling from the trees in, in waves, leaving their tracks naked as a slight breeze caressed the landscape. Everything looked transparent, as if an invisible rain shower had washed it clean. And suddenly he felt it. First it was a sharp pain in the back, and at once a terrible jolt of the spinal cord, a hot wave travelled instantly through his whole body. At the same time, everything around him started growing dark. Within less than a second, he felt another piercing pain, this time in his neck, even more acute. Without thinking, he turned around. He could not make out anything, anybody. Sounds started to be muffled, and his mouth filled with liquid. The trees around him looked as if they were bending, as if they were holding the branches up with difficulty, in a sky that was being split from within. Everything fluttered, darkness spreading like mist. The air was carrying the city's smells, human, foreign, unbearable. 
who felt himself falling. It was a slow fall, almost pleasurable. Mixed sounds journeyed through space and danced in his ears, among them a child's voice, Phoenix's. Lying on the ground, he saw the faces of strangers over him. He tried to bring to into focus the images made luminous by the moon. His eyes did not respond. He felt a hand touching him, then a face coming close, a blonde head, hers. Laura bent down and took him in her arms, while all around and familiar voices seemed to be chasing one another. Her lips were close to his. He smelled something vaguely familiar, but the perfume started to dissolve like smoke. As the faces around him were starting to melt and the darkness grew denser, he saw himself pushing open a way through the shadows and approaching a line of people who in single file were walking across the bridge as if in a parade, and one after another were dropping into the water. They were all relatives of his. When the last of them, the one with the harpoon in his back, fell, the scene was lit up for a moment. Everything slowed down as if the earth was condemned to stop. In the far distance, at the limit of his sight, a meadow appeared, just like those he had crossed when he travelled across America. Only it was a little darker, a little warmer, a little drier. In the centre, a heap of crops was burning. From high up, in the cloud sky, the image of his mother began to fade away, and Laura's face, Laura's face returned in light and shadow, shadow and light. When the flames shot up, with great effort, he moved his face closer to her and whispered his name, his real name. He fell back and Laura bent over him. He saw the pupil of her eye grown larger and in it, as if in a Flemish mirror, he saw Marcello's face, crowned with a marigold garland, smiling at him. For a moment everything was revealed. Lying on the green grass of Central Park with a bullet on his back and another in his throat, he learned finally and for all time who he was. Why? Why now? He heard himself whispering through a crack of his soul. A whisper full of dust that turned against him like a whirlwind of incomprehension. From some place far away, he heard an answer that floated around him and disintegrated in the exhausted air. Everything darkened as at last his memory departed. His heart fluttered softly and stopped, surrendering its beat to the night. The last image in his mind was the ideogram on her neck fading away until all sound retreated, the light withdrew, the sense of taste dissolved and began following the laws of a word impossible for us to know that which comes after.